by the end of this video, you'll know how to use all three polygon commands that are available in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. The polygon commands can be accessed in two different locations. You'll find them in the Sketch drop-down menu located within the Polygon Flyout folder. Alternatively, you can access them from the right-click menu, the Sketch folder, and then the Polygon Flyout folder. You'll notice Fusion 360 offers three different types of polygons. There are circumscribed polygons, inscribed polygons, and the edge polygons. To start off, I'll activate the circumscribed polygon by selecting it from the list. This circumscribed polygon helps you create a polygon by using the center point and the midpoint of one edge. I'll select the XY origin plane, and then I'll click on the center origin and drag out with my mouse. There are two input fields that we can define. First, you can set the number of sides of the polygon. Now the lowest number you can type out here is three, which creates a triangle or the smallest possible polygon. You'll see that I can continue to change this number and the sides will update accordingly. Next, I can define the radius of the circle or the distance from the center of the polygon to the midpoint of one edge. Like any sketch input boxes, I can type out a dimension. So I'll type out 25 millimeters, and then I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, which will keep me from accidentally changing the size of the polygon. Now I can choose where to place the polygon by selecting a point with my mouse. And once I click, you'll see there is an orange background highlight signifying that this is a closed profile shape. The next polygon is the inscribed polygon. I'll activate the inscribed polygon by selecting it from the sketch drop-down menu. The inscribed polygon works in a similar manner as the circumscribed polygon. I'll click to set the center point of the inscribed polygon. As I drag out with my mouse, you'll notice the first difference is that the circle is now on the outside of the polygon. In other words, the polygon is inscribed within the circle. I'll make this one six-sided and I'll make the dimensions 35 millimeters. After I click to set the polygon, you'll notice the dimension field displays from the midpoint to the vertex of the polygon. Now, one important thing to note with polygons is that you can change the dimensions by double-clicking on them. However, at the time of making this tutorial, Fusion 360 does not currently let you edit the number of sides of the polygon once you set the polygon in place. You'll want to keep this in mind if you plan on using any polygons within your sketches. The last polygon available is the edge polygon. This polygon is quite a bit different because you'll need to first define a single edge of the polygon. Then you'll need to define the position of the polygon. I'll type out the dimension of 45 millimeters and hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Next, you'll see that we can either place the second point where it will snap into place, or we can define the angle of the position. I'll type out three degrees for the position, and then I'll hit the tab key to lock the degrees in place, followed by clicking with my left mouse button to set the first edge of the polygon. Immediately after, you'll see that the polygon appears, and you can type out the number of sides. As I change the number of edges, take note of how the initial edge doesn't move, but the polygon will appear to grow or change in size based on the number of edges entered. Lastly, you can click on either side of the initial edge to set the polygon. In summary, you'll find each of the three polygon sketch tools to come in handy at some point. 
The circumscribed polygon is helpful if you know the distance from the center point to the midpoint of an edge. The inscribed polygon works great if you know the distance required from the center point to the vertex of the polygon. And last but not least, the edge polygon works the best if you know the length of an edge. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.